Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics Visibility. <laughs> Don't know why I sung that. Anyway, in this episode, I'll be covering visibility in Bevy. Starting with what I mean by visibility and how it relates to Bevy. Then how Bevy lets you control the visibility using the visibility struct. How Bevy lets you read something's visibility state and uh, manipulate the state of other things beyond just the I want this thing to be seen of the game design itself. And finally, an example of how the visibility hierarchy works. Even though modern hardware is blindingly fast, it is still important to optimize your game's performance wherever possible. One of the most obvious and easiest of these optimizations is not to waste time rendering things that are not seen by the player. Whether this is because it is outside of the player's field of view, obscured by something else in the scene, too far away from the player, or the focus of this video, deliberately hidden by the developer. Bevy lets the developer change whether they want an entity to be visible or not using the visibility struct. The visibility struct is very simple, containing only a single boolean called is visible. This boolean represents whether the game developer wants the entity and any of its children to be rendered. This boolean represents whether the game developer wants the entity and as of 0.8, any of its children to be rendered. This is where direct control of an entity's visibility is performed. This struct is used by other things that have additional impact on rendering that are optionally controlled. Things such as lights, which can be turned on and off using this struct. These changes will be propagated to the compute visibility component by Bevy's internal systems. Speaking of which, the compute visibility struct is used to determine if an entity should actually be rendered. This differs from visibility because it is not used to indicate if you want something to happen, but instead represents a way of querying if something should happen. This could be that all ancestor entities have their visibility set to true or some other method to determine if something needs this entity rendered regardless of the visibility. The computer visibility struct is, well, twice as complex as the visibility struct, consisting of two booleans, one representing whether the entity is visible in the hierarchy and the other being a boolean to represent whether at least one other system has decided this entity should be rendered this frame. Using these, computed visibility provides three different methods to determine the state that it's in. The is visible in hierarchy returns true if the entity and all its ancestors have their visibility set true. Is visible in view returns true if at least one system called set is view is visible in view on this entity, this frame. And is visible represents that both the previous statements return true. The set visible in view method is used to decide that an entity needs to be rendered this frame. The respective boolean is set false after every frame update and needs to be set true again by additional systems. This is up to the programmer to implement and design what logic controls this type of visibility. For example, meshes use frustum culling to determine their visibility in the view. This default behavior of Bevy can be disabled per entity with the no frustum culling flag component. Bevy provides visibility and spatial bundles to quickly and easily add the components necessary for visibility to an entity. The spatial bundle also adds additional components necessary for this to apply to transforms as well. More on that in the next video. Bevy also has the visible entities struct that consists of a vector containing all entities that have been determined to be visible from the respective viewpoint it is attached to, and its companion struct visible point lights, consisting of a vector with all entities with lights on them along with the point and spotlight counts. This can be found on cameras and other entities of such nature. This is then used for optimization during the rendering process. Do note, as of Bevy 0.8, sprite rendering does not currently use this optimization technique. On to an example. Link to the description below, you will find my GitHub repository for Bevy Basics. Inside that repository, you will find the, an example called Visibility. When run, will open up this scene here. All this scene consists of is a stack of cubes all spaced out and placed in a hierarchy together. When pressing any of the number pads, you will hide the respective number cube in the hierarchy. So if I press zero, all the cubes disappear because the bottom cube and all of its children will vanish. If I press zero again, the cubes will return. If I only press nine, only the top cube will disappear because it has no children to vanish with it. This applies to all the cubes, such as 7 will make the top 3 cubes disappear because 
of, again, respectively, its children are hidden, but its parents are not. The other types of visibility are much harder to represent, and so I do not have examples of them. Also in this example, if you look at the world inspector that is visible, you can drop down the spotlight, which is entity one, and the is visible, and toggling this will toggle whether the spotlight is visible or not. You can also see attached to the camera is the point light and entity components, and the spotlight has visible entities, though for some reason this reads as zero. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to hearing your comments about visibility, <laughs> and I will see you in the next video where I do transforms. That one is going to be a hell of a video because it scripts like four times longer than this one. This video needs to be dragged out because there's really nothing to talk about with visibility. <laughs> I'm sorry.